Welcome to Perio Magazine, where I chat with individuals who have a desire to create. Today, I am joined by the author and illustrator of an upcoming children's book. Welcome to Perio Magazine, Ashley Melross. Hey guys, hello. So Good morning. We're, he we're here today to chat about your journey creating a new kids book. Before we mm -hmm. dive into that, do you want to give a little introduction as to who you are away from the world of books? <clears throat> yeah, so um, who am I away? So my, my primary um, career or my only career at the moment is um, as a registered nurse. Um, you know, I'm part-time in the emergency department and I do a little bit of uh, flight nursing with a company called Care Flight, and that's about flying patients from the country to the city or city to the country um, post procedure. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of where you know most of my focus is, and then I've kind of deliberately dropped a few shifts so I can focus on a few creative endeavours um, prior to coming up with the idea to to execute on a kids picture book. I um, I've always enjoyed dabbling in making short films, short movies. I've, uh, you know, I've kind of focused mostly on YouTube with that space. A um, couple of narrative shorts and then, you know, a couple of not so much vloggy style, but slightly constructed little pieces of, um, I don't know, video content, I guess you could say. Um, I'm a dad. Uh, my daughter's six now. And, you know, I feel like that's where I was like, okay, when she started preschool, uh, when you become a parent, you often start thinking about, you know, little parenting must-dos and, and a few of those things, you know, incorporated road safety and, and safety instructions. And, and that's where this little idea started to stem from. Um, and so, yeah, the most of my creative focus has been on, on this kid's book lately. Uh, probably, I mean, she started, you know, we're going three years ago, I jotted down a couple of just bold headlines on top what, what might be in the story and then, then it all kind of went from there in terms of construction and things like that. All right. So yeah, like you mentioned, you've kind of ever since I've known you, you've had that creative urge to go and make things. What yeah, was it yeah. was it was it sort of just being around kids all the time, having your own kids that pushed you into all right, let's really, really focus on making something for kids and making this book. Yeah, definitely I think before I had my daughter, like I was mostly, like I, I had this kind of, I guess a fluffy ambition to make a feature film one day. I haven't got a, a solid subject matter, but um, before that, a whole bunch of short films are probably going to get made and, and things like that. And then once I had my daughter and yeah, we started preschool, um, it was all about, you know, what, what can I make now? Because you get quite busy and it's hard to focus and things like that. But once she started preschool, I was able to have a few days there where I'd, so I'd spend up at her, near the local library and, yeah, really honey. Because I feel like, you know, I would often chat with, you know, some family members and be like, oh, yeah, it'd be cool to make a kid's book about this, a kid's book about that. And, you know, there's that saying, like, ideas are good, but it's the execution that counts. And, and I guess I've taken that pretty seriously. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and make one and get it to the point where it's, you know, a hard copy little book. Um, yeah, you know, like you don't know, like you, I don't have a business background, but you know, the process of making it is something that I've really enjoyed and get a lot of fulfillment out of. Has a book felt like a, a more achievable goal in the short term than like the feature film or just even some short oh, films? Oh yeah, I would, so short films, I've, I've made most of my narrative pieces before I had a daughter. And so that was easier because I guess with short films, when you've got a bit of a cast, like, you know, if, when you start dealing with five, six, seven people, you know, it's in the it's a bit of a hustle to get everyone together at the same time. Everyone's got their own lives going on in, in the short film. With the indie short film space, there's no, no budgets really. So it's very much everyone just coming together to try and finish a, a short film and, and, you know, trying to squeeze that into a schedule when there's you know, seven or eight people, it's like running a little business, but there's no, no money attached. It, it's, it's quite complex to get it to the finish line. Um, it can take a lot, take a long time. And so like, I feel like I'd made three or four and by the fourth one, you kind of know the process and so you know what to expect in your videoing. So you don't really, like, so 
the short films sort of in the short experimentation. Term. It's more I know what I'm going for. Yeah, with the short films, I feel like executing those. Like I thought ex- they were complex, and then I started the kids book, and I didn't really know how to draw well in terms of characters. I hadn't really drawn for years, and I've never really focused on character drawings. I think in high school I did like abstracty type acrylic paints on big canvases but this one required a lot of focus in terms of you know a little bit more detail I guess so that was probably the longest part is learning the drawing part because I'd already done a few story developments around you know, around the short films got to the kids book and the story part was fun and more achievable than I found the drawing the drawing was like heaps time consuming and mm-hmm. short films maybe you know it's a few months, maybe six months, the kids' book. That's been a massive journey, just trying to get that in, like squeeze it in when I can. And then the time spent, like doing, I think there's like 32 pictures. And the amount of time that it takes to get the watercolour onto those pictures is, is a long way. I, I feel like the kids' book for me has been a bigger challenge than, than the short films. A feature okay. film, I don't know, feature films, I that's a big ambition and like, probably just need to bite the bullet and start developing something i just haven't honed on to what i write about yet whether it's something more personal or something that i've you know seen or witnessed or or inspired by like i wrote to i recently listened to a book i mean let us know if i'm waffling too much i don't have a (laughs) steady fire like i almost forget what i almost forget the question that you asked something about (laughs) as the is it a more achievable goal to get a kid's book made than a feature film yep i feel like the answer you know, I'll, you know, summarize it quickly. Yes, because it's me, you know, a pen, a pencil, some paints and paper. And, it, and it's, you know, it's more of a solo solo journey. It's a bit lonely at times. It's nice to have a team around you when you're doing the short film stuff. But, you know, yes, making a, making a kid's book seems more achievable at this moment than a feature film. Okay. And then, so obviously now that you've decided to go down this path, do you have like favorite books or specific inspirations that have influenced the book? Yeah, hundred percent. So if there's any parents out there, the Gruffalo and the Gruffalo's child are two books that when I read them, I was, I was, I was captivated and I was just like, they was just such lovely books um, and really well written, really fun. They're kind of done in rhyming couplets. And I feel like that's where the main inspiration for this book came was I've done it in rhyming couplets. So like little groups of four, and they, you know they rhyme basically every page has a bit of a rhyme on it which kind of makes it fun for you as the parent and the and, the, and your child to to listen to <clears throat> uh so those two books were definitely kicked it off i was like that's it i'm writing a book that's it i'm gonna follow up on this idea I, the idea was years ago but you know um yeah those two books definitely in recent times has it been sort of a really fun and exciting journey for you to sort of write little pieces of the book and do the drawings and then like show them to your daughter and see how she reacts to them yeah love it i mean i don't if i prepare more like yeah absolutely she's now at the point where she's like yeah i've seen that one i've seen that one but (laughs) for a while there when this colors started getting put onto the page yeah she would come to me and pretty much redraw what i what i'd created and she would come up with her own little stories and initially I was going to call it my daughter like the main like the kid in the character in the book I was going to call the child after my daughter Olivia and it was going to be a little girl character but I'd, I'd drawn a little guy that I was like yeah actually he's pretty cool and I ended up calling him Lee and she was be like why'd you call him Lee I was like well it kind of has a bit of you know it works well in the story with a few of the rhymes and you know I will, I will do another one and it will have your name and I think that will be a bit, bit of a rescue mission one. Maybe maybe we lose a bird and, and we can't find it for four days and then and the bird makes its own way home. Something like that. Maybe the next book, but this one, she's definitely, yeah, she's she's got a little sticker on the pot plan as you walk in. She's drawn the little boy character. She's done the lady, like it's got a bit of a warrior ladybug hero character in the story. And he's, um, yep. yeah, he's he's been drawn many times. Okay, so yeah, it's cool that she sort of has her own little stamp on the book as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then was it just like having a, a child and being around kids with the care flight stuff that made you want to write a children's book over something more for like 
a novel or an adult book? Well, I think novels, um, I'm, you know, my attention span is not the greatest. Um, <laughs> and so, like, a novel's a big journey. And I thought kids' books, 28. I mean, mate, uh, I mean, I want to write a feature film. That's going to be a lot of writing, but um, not in that kind of narrative form that, that you see in novels. I don't, I like to listen to books a lot. Like since Audible, love it. Like it just, I listen to so many more books now. Or, or you know, I wouldn't say read books. You know, it's yeah, definitely just listening consuming to books. books and stories a bit more. But the care flights, the care flights, not all um, all children transports. They do. Okay. I think once upon a time they had it. Uh, they were. They did have a contract with a like a section of healthcare called Nets, which is like the neonatal emergency transport service, like little babies that are critically unwell need to be flown to a bigger hospital quickly. Mm -hmm. um, they used to have, I think they used to have a contract with Nets. We do move babies, like I think a couple of weeks ago, we moved like a six day old baby. And that's tiny. Um, so we moved, but then you also moved, from, you know, the 99 year old grandma is going home after after a bit of surgery or medical checkups but um no i wouldn't say it was inspired by like the care for myself but most mostly just after i had my daughter um you know you go to the school crossing and it's got all the road safety like i think two big messages in the book or like not messages but two little emphasis points on safety would be um listen to your pop safety instructions and don't put things up your nose and that's like the mild <laughs> one and the other one would be um like road safety, looking left and right before you uh, cross the road. Um, yeah, I'd say that would be the bigger take home one to try and emphasise in there would be road safety for little kids. Okay. And is that sort of like, if you wanted to do follow-ups, would you continue like those sort of safety messages or do you have other plans and other stories in mind? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, this, the one, that story that I was talking about before, the little bird that flies away for four days. We lost a bird when I was younger and he flew away. It was a massive mission. We were out for ages looking for him and we'd given up. We're like, okay, well, we've lost the bird. See you later. So one day, mum was having a conversation with the neighbours, yada, yada, yada. And the bird just came and flew and just sat on her shoulder. And she's like, <laughs> you know, we used to call the bird squirt because he would poo in the toilet. And, you know, or not poo in the toilet, but when he pooed, it was just like a just you know birds they're just runny poos anyways it was just amazing that feeling of like holy shit he's come home like it's been four days i thought he would have been either dead or just who knows long gone but, um, the current bird that we've got now is a rescue bird um my mum-in-law went out to a back backyard and, and this bird was getting absolutely beaten up by a couple of magpies like smashed in the face he's bleeding She's going to give the magpies a bit of a kick to get them out of the way because they were letting up on this little guy. I don't know if you've seen what like crows and magpies do to little birds, but it's mm -hmm. pretty gnarly yep. when they when they when they sort them out. But um, yeah, they they thrown him around and anyway, he's got rid of the magpies and and rescued this little bird. And he's he's awesome. He's a little cocker cockatiel. So I might base it off. off. I don't know if it's a he or a she, but we've called it Snowflake because it's a white and a grey bird. Um, we put posters up, no one's claimed it. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if the future ones will be around safety. I mean, no, I mean, I'm, I mean, working in the emergency department, you do see a lot of people come unstuck, and, and you know, there's little safety precautions are good, but you know, everyone's you're always going to make mistakes. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, you could do ones about you know, burns, how not to burn yourself as a little kid, but <laughs> yep. Um, Oh, I guess having yeah, having, sure. a daughter, you're, guess having a hey. daughter, you're never going to be short for ideas on stories and things that. No, nah, she make a great awesome book. one. Of them. She had the day, da, da, day off. Yeah, she had the day off. She was had a bit of a runny nose, and at the moment, you know, we try not to send her in when she's got the sniffles. She's settled down now, but um, what was like, I oh, was like, can you just write me a, a kid a storybook? I don't care what the story is, just do me about 10 pictures and tell me what the story is about. And she's, you know, she's got like some pretty cool ideas that she runs around with. Um, I think the one she's got there was around the floods. You know, there's been a lot of flood flood mm -hmm. talk on the news in recent times. Yeah. So I think she kind of did a bit of a flood, flood related ones and rescues with slippery dips and stuff like that. So 
you they've got great ideas just in inhibit like that like they just don't have any inhibition so anything goes in their stories so it's good well that'd be cool maybe one day we'll get a a collaboration between you and her on a book yeah i've definitely kept a bunch of her characters because she does I, you know she does some cool characters so i always keep them and yeah and then in terms of getting the book out into the world how are you looking at doing that are you looking at like self-publishing going to a publisher or maybe like even going like the crowdfunding route so i haven't considered crowdfunding um not sure i've just kind of I just don't want that pressure of having other people's like dealing with other people's money. Mm -hmm. um, so not crowdfunding, um, maybe down the track, there's potential. Like I know Patreon can be quite good for projects. Um, yep. But yeah, again, I don't want the pressure of other people's money at this point. So I'll just kind of using my spare time to get the book into a position where I can use potentially print on demand companies. I was, I've reached out to a couple, there's a, paramedic at work he's done a few a few big projects well i consider them big uh, there's a book called the gap um like the, the like a summary in the life of a paramedic um benjamin gilmore is his name uh he's done a film called jerga that was i think that might have been on stand for a while but a special forces soldier that revisits afghanistan after but he, his stories epic. Like he, he, him and his mate went over it was just him and his mate and he knows some afghanis over there that um you know, that are into the entertainment kind of sector over there. And some of the stories he tells about going out in Afghanistan at the time filming was, was pretty, pretty full on. Um, yeah, he tells this, yeah. Anyways, he's an inspiration and I meet, reach out to him and he's like, yeah, try, you may, maybe try submit because with, with kids books, so right at the second, my, I feel like I just want to try and get it out by myself. Mm -hmm. um, alternatively, Penguin House or Penguin Random House and Pan Macmillan. I think they take people kind of no names who haven't really done it before, take manuscripts and, and you know, semi-finished kids' books and, you know, th turn around to see if, whether you're successful and they'll take your book to distribution, maybe three to six months. So I've looked at that, but maybe it's a confidence thing. I just feel like at this point I want to um, do it myself. So I'll be probably looking at print-on-demand sites and trying to study how to market market things yourself that's um, right yeah i guess if, I think if I, you get I it, have pros and cons. yeah i guess if you get it to that like completed stage if then a publisher does come and see it and it, it explodes then they can sign you up for the next one or they can take yeah, it on it explodes, and that'd be nice. do it do a second pub second printing or something and get it out on a wider scale yeah yeah and that's kind of what they that's where it's the benefit is they're just their marketing reach and their strength in distribution is, is good um Alrighty. uh sort of when can we be sort of looking out for the book to be coming out or getting close i kind of want to have it ready for christmas shopping so i was talking to one of the girls at work and she's like maybe november i was like because i was like oh i haven't looked at when most people do their christmas shopping mm -hmm. but maybe i think before september will be before november would be good um yep but I, I wouldn't mind having it ready for Christmas. But you know, I have, you know, I've got rough deadlines penciled in because I, I think when we hop off this call, I'll probably start working on cover design. I've got a couple of ideas floating around. I don't know whether to share a couple of cover designs, like prototypes, to see which one kind of appeals. Maybe I can, you know, just have like a small group of people I could send one through to you and see what you reckon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just always a good design. idea just to get a, a few different bits of feedback. Yeah um so yeah for chrissy this year is is the short answer there um but i want to kind of have a few things in stages like i want to do a narrative short maybe get some voiceover artists up here to read the book um maybe have like a you know i might read reach out to chris hemsworth and see if he wants to do a, a, a book read i think he's just done a big one with oh it wasn't bbc i had that thought i was like oh maybe i should reach out to people with big reach and see if they like the book and you know, want to support a no name, and then um, then I saw a big thing where he'd already signed a big contract to do, you know, children's book narr narration. I was like, ah, oh well. Yeah, Maybe I, I guess time. it's worth it's worth a shot to sort of reach out to people. Like the worst they can say is, "Oh no, thank you." Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I have that same mindset. Just straight to the junk mail if it's not worthy. Yep. 
Alrighty. So finally, where is the best place for people to follow you, track this creative journey, and then keep an eye out for when the book is available? Uh, right now, YouTube, that's where I've spent focus most of my, put most of my attention is, is YouTube uploads. And then, you know, you know, dabble with Instagram, um, probably need to get better at, at, at Instagram, I'd say, haven't, haven't touched base with any of the others really, but yeah, YouTube would be the one that I'm trying to, to build the most at the moment. I just like the, yeah, I just, I use YouTube a lot. And so, yeah, that would be the best one. And is it just like, just search Ashley Melros on there and it'll pop up? Yeah, so it's Ash, Ash Melros, A-S-H, and then my last name, M-E-L-L-R-O-S-S. All right, is, perfect though. Yeah. I'll make sure that looks I mean, I'll make all or... sorts of things on there, but when I'm making something, I'm trying to make the making of as well. Yep, uh, yeah, there's lots of little like teasers for the book and things there. Yeah. Behind the scenes stuff. Alrighty, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me and good luck with the release. No, I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, no, thanks, Jamie. Appreciate it.